He says, I've read, he or she, I've read elsewhere that Bart Ehrman actually uses the conflicting accounts in the Gospels to show that the resurrection couldn't have happened. He asks his audience how many women actually went to the tomb. Was it one? Was it two? Was it Mary Magdalene alone? Or was it with Mary and other women? And why do we have them going into the tomb in one account and running away scared in another? These are types of questions he usually asks. Doesn't this conflict, uh, doesn't this conflict with Dr. Craig's statement that Bart Ehrman has no problem with the historian carrying out step one of his argument? The short answer is yes, it does conflict. Bart Ehrman is in conflict with himself. As I pointed out, if you listen to his historical Jesus lectures with the teaching company, in those lectures, he affirms the historicity of all of those facts upon which the resurrection is based. The honorable burial by Joseph of Arimathea, the discovery of the empty tomb by women, the post-mortem appearances to different individuals and groups, and the origin of the earliest disciples' sincere belief that Jesus was risen from the dead. When Ehrman gave the teaching company lectures, he was fully aware of all of these conflicts in the secondary details that he likes to talk about. But as a good historian, he recognized that these sorts of features do not serve to call into question the historical core of these narratives, which he then affirmed. What happened is that later on, I think where he saw this was, when he saw where this was leading, he then suddenly began to back away and say that he doesn't affirm the burial in the tomb or the uh, historicity of the empty tomb. And when you look at his reasons for this, there's no new evidence that he's since discovered, uh, no new factors that would cause him to doubt that he wasn't aware of before. He just points to these same discrepancies in the secondary features of the narratives and now says that these are grounds for skepticism. Um, and I think that just shows bad historical judgment. I think he saw that given the facts of the burial, empty tomb, post-mortem appearances, and origin of the disciples' faith in Jesus, that it is uh, very difficult then to deny that the best explanation of these facts is the one the disciples gave, namely Jesus rose from the dead. And so to avoid that, he began then to deny these facts, uh, appealing to these discrepancies. You think the goal is just to provide a kind of a mist of skepticism around it that, well, here's a lot of stuff that we don't know, and so uh, maybe we don't know about any of it, and it's it's not really intended to be an actual critique of um, of the historical case? Well, in his debates, if you've ever heard him, it's a, it's a powerful rhetorical ploy. You know, he'll say, was it dark when the women had gone to the tomb? Or was the sun already risen? Depends on which gospel you read. Was Mary um, and Salome the women who went to the tomb? Or was it Mary the mother of James and Joseph? Depends on which gospel you read. And he says this over and over <laughs> and over again and makes it sound like these gospel narratives are hopelessly contradictory when in fact he knows that the gospel accounts are in complete accord with respect to the historical core of these narratives. Um, and I would invite our students to just take a simple exercise of looking at the four gospels. I did this once and record every feature of the narrative that is found in all four Gospels. And you will construct quite a nice historical account. If you include details that are found in three out of the four Gospels, it will be an even longer account. Uh, and what that illustrates is that the Gospels are in essential agreement with respect to things like the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus, despite the sort of discrepancies that, as you pointed out, Russ, uh, one will find in eyewitness testimony in typical cases.